Okay, good evening, everyone. Is that working? Everybody can hear me? Okay, good. Seems to, seems good to see this many faces in this room for a change. No. Um, our agenda, I'm going to, I'm going to call every, all the meetings to order here. We've got two different meetings, but uh, I'm going to call the, the uh, informational meeting for the Swamp Village Board of Trustees and the town together, and we'll open our meetings after the pledge of allegiance. So, officially, this is calling to order both board's meetings. So, with that being said, can you please write the pledge of allegiance? informational meeting on February 22nd at uh, 7.03 um, here at the Village Complex. Okay, that being said, the next item on our agenda is the, I, somebody is going to give you a town warning. I yeah, right. Thank you, good evening. <laughs> Uh, it's my pleasure to read the warning uh, as published in the town report and as officially posted uh, in the town offices and in two other places in the, in the town. So, the Town of Swanton Annual Warning Annual Meeting, Tuesday, March 1st, 2022. Legal voters of the Town of Swanton who are legal voters in town meeting are hereby notified and warned to meet the Swanton Village Municipal Complex personnel in the streets in Swanton on Tuesday, March 1st, 2022 at 7 a.m. to vote the articles here in set four. All articles will be voted by the Australian ballot system. The polls are open at 7 a.m. polls at 7 p.m. Article 1. To elect from the voters of the said town the following officers. Moderator for the town of a term of one year. One select person for a three-year term. One select person for a two-year term one lister for a three-year term, one auditor for a three-year term, one trustee of public money for a three-year term, one trustee of public money for a two-year expired term, unexpired term, one library trustee for a five-year term, one library trustee for a one-year unexpired term, one cemetery commissioner for a five-year term, one collector of delinquent taxes. Article two shall the town appropriate $1,044,303.75 for the operation and maintenance of the town highway department. Article 3, shall the town appropriate $263,875 for fire protection. Article 4, shall the town appropriate $157,239.94 provide police protection to the residents of the town of Swanton. Shall, Article 5, shall the town appropriate $333,925.92 for the town general expense? Article 6, shall the town appropriate $194,097 for the operating <coughs> and maintenance budget of the Swanton Public Library? Article 7, shall the town appropriate an additional $53,500 for the operating budget of the Swanton Public Library? Article 8, Shall the town collect its real and personal property, ta property taxes and defray the expenses of the town for the fiscal year commencing January 1st, 2022, and annually thereafter, by its actual receipt of payment? Postmarks will not be accepted at the town offices by 5 p.m. on October 15th, or if the 15th shall follow a weekend or holiday, the following business day by 5 p.m. with an 8% penalty. 1% interest per month thereon for the first three months and one and one half percent per month or portion thereof thereafter to be charged for the late payment of any installment. 
Shall the town of Swanton, Article 9, shall the town of Swanton town appropriate $196,628 to provide rescue services to the residents of the town of Swanton? Article 10, shall the town appropriate $123,247.24 for the operation and maintenance budget of the recreation department? The legal voters of the town of Swanton are further notified that an informational meeting will be held at Swanton Village Complex, 121st Street, Swanton, Vermont, on Tuesday, February 22, 2022, at 7 p.m. in person and via Zoom for the purpose of explaining all budget items to the voters. Anyone desiring to participate and listen to the meeting by cell or landline should dial and the number is given and enter the meeting ID number when prompted and announced your name. If you join the Zoom meeting, online your computer click this link and the link is given and along with the passport. The passport. Uh, dated as Swanton, Vermont this 19th day of January 2022 is signed James Gilman Chair, Mark Rushwell Vice Chair, Edward White Senior, Nicole Draper, and Earl Fournier. It was dated and filed the 19th day of January 2022 attested to by Conti L. Fournier Town Clerk. Future, future 
municipal complex and park upgrades. Article number eight, shall the voters of the village of Swanton authorize the board of trustees to place surplus funds in the fire department anticipated to be $2,139 into a capital fund for future purchases. Article number nine, shall the voters of the village of Swanton approve a bond or note not to exceed 15 years issued for the purpose of financing the cost of new water meters as part of the automated meter infrastructure program, not to exceed $630,000. Article number 10, shall the voters of the village of Swan authorize the Board of Trustees to allow the retail sale of cannabis within the village of Swan. The League of Voters of the village of Swan are further notified that an informational meeting will be held on Tuesday, February 22nd, 2022, at 7 p.m. in person and via Zoom for the purpose of explaining all the budget items to the voters. Anyone desiring to participate and listen in on the meeting by cell or landline phone shall dial 1646-558-8656 and enter the meeting ID uh, you're given when prompted and announce your name. To join the Zoom meeting online on a computer, click the link, which has been stated in the past code. Um, dated at Swamp, Vermont, this 24th day of January 2022. Signed by Neil Spear, Eugene LaBombard, trustee, uh, Chris Leach, trustee, and Adam Paxman, trustee. Received and filed this 24th day of January 2022. Signed by Diane Jose, the village clerk. Good evening, folks. Let me go over the uh, information here. Uh, <coughs> first link tonight, we'd like to uh, express our got gratitude to uh, best wishes to much gratitude to David Scavage, who retired on the December 31st after close to 10 years of dedication to the Swamp community as our town administrator. His duties included service, serving as deputy commissioner, administrator, and town representative on the Northwest Regional Planning Commission and Brownfield Committee, as well as working with consultants and state and federal agencies and public. Uh, we want to wish David happy, we want to wish David many years in, in retirement, happiness in retirement, and, and our congratulations. Thank you very much, David. 
for all your service. After the 2021 annual meeting, the select board consists of Chair James Gilmet, Vice Chair Mark Rushlow, Nicole Sletman, Nicole Draper, Ed White, and after an absence for a uh, number of years, Earl Funger rejoined the board. We are grateful and, and dedicate, grateful for the dedicated service that Heather Wyszkowski had provided to the residents of Swan, and always looked, looked out for the best interest Heather continues to serve as a member of the Planning Commission. Select Board Member Nicole Draper has designed the official Facebook page of the Town of Swanton, containing much useful information for upcoming events and news in the community. In early September, our Town Administrator, David Discavage, announced his plan, uh, plan to retire at the end of the year. We'd like to thank, thank David again. Uh, thank David for his dedication and service to the town for approximately 10 years. The select board advertised the position, advertised for qualified candidates to fill the position. On December 1st, Brian Savage was awarded the position of town administrator. And late this past year, the Economic Development Coordinator, Elizabeth Nance, tendered a resignation and accepted the position with Franklin County Industrial Development Corporation. Through a member, mem memorandum of understanding with the FDIC, Elizabeth will continue to work eight hours per week with the economic development activities both town and village of Swan. In addition to the role as town administrator has been expanded to include economic development. We are looking forward to having both Elizabeth and Brian working on our economic development efforts. In November, a long time plan in November, a longtime planning commissioner and chairman, Jim Hubbard, stepped down after serving on the commission since 1996. Jim has served for many years as the chairman and has become a valuable resource to this community. He's dedicated his service to Swan and very much appreciated. Best wishes to him and big thank you and wishing him well in years ahead. And I'd like to personally say thank you, Jim, for all his years of service. Select Board continues to honor the veterans with an additional 40 flags being sponsored for the Veterans Day in uh, 2021. Brings a total of 150 flags. Serves uh, several significant repairs have been made through, uh, were being planned for the historic town office building in 2021. We replaced all the windows on the first floor. Um, we've also consulted with the uh, Cross engineering to address a drainage issue um, through the Fieldstone Foundation, which we actually just had to be appointed. Um, scope. scope and study on Lake Street and Qualm Shore was completed in 2021 for a pos possible pedestrian bike path that's to the St. Albans Town line. The proposed sidewalk on the north side of First Street. Uh, from McDonald East to MBO entrance is also in progress with an engineer nearing completion. As requested for construction will be advertised in the near future. The following roads resurfaced work done to them in 2021 was last near road, Sugar Maple Drive, Gothier Drive, Pinnell Road, Frontage Road, and Ferris Street. <coughs> Major culvert replacement will be scheduled this summer in 2022 for the BB Road. The town will be awarding the grant from the state <coughs> Town was, town was a, was awarded a grant from the state of Vermont uh, for $121,121 with a winning bid for the project awarded to Goodhue Excavation of Fairfield at a cost of $219,875, the difference of $98,754 uh, between the grant and the award and the bid price has been included in the line item for road improvement projects this year's highway budget. In 2021, our select board appointed Jim Benson, the Swan Animal Control Officer. He can be reached by cell phone at 802-238-3246 or by email at swantonaco at gmail.com. The ACO only deals with dog issues. The ACO does not accept dogs that are no longer wanted by their owners, cats or other animals, not handled by the ACO. After the resignation of Leonard Stell, 
Uh, Rosita Smith was appointed by the Vermont Department of Health as recommendation from the select board as a new health officer. She can be reached at 802-370-0778 or 802-347-3227. Since 19, 1916, the Swanton Public Library has served as a residence of this community throughout the hard work and dedication of the King's Daughters with the financial assistance from the town of Swanton in the form of an annual appropriations. In 2021, talks began between the select board of the library and the trustees of the library to convert operations of the library to a department of the town. A memorandum of understanding was negotiated and finalized on December 30th between the library trustees and the town select board. The majority of the operations of the library will be funded by the budget developed by the library and voted on at town meeting day. The employees of the library have become employees of the town effective January 1st, 2022. For 2022, the library is requesting $194,097 for the portion of their expenses that are on the, on the tax budget. In addition, the library trustees are requesting an additional $53,500 for the day-to-day -day operation spend expenses such as utilities, cleaning books, annual audit. Uh, the library provides many valuable services to residents of Swan. Projects for 2022. Culvert replacement on Beaver Road is sleep for late spring, early summer. Uh, address a permanent solution to the Barry Road culvert replacement. Uh, seek grant funding to complete the resurfacing of the Beaver Road after the culvert project is completed. Continue economic development efforts with, with a <coughs> concentration on the Southern Gulch District and partners with the village will continue work on the downtown revitalization. Budget request summary. If all, all voted articles are approved, the town's general budget will be $1,109,000 $117.13 to be raised by tax to be raised by taxes we $653,800.53 the total highway budget is $1,611,918.69 to be raised by taxes would be $1,465,418.69 the library budget would be $194,097. The library appropriations would be $53,500. To be raised by taxes would be $247,597. The general budget, if all articles approved, would be $1,109,000. $117.31. To be raised by taxes would be $600. Hundred fifty-three thousand eight hundred and fifty-three dollars. The twenty twenty-two projected tax rate is point zero nine four one. The twenty twenty-one tax rate was point one zero seven eight. The twenty twenty-two tax rate decrease of point zero one three seven. Vote on Tuesday, March first, twenty twenty-two, from seven a.m. to seven p.m. And that will be here at the Village Complex. <clears throat> 2022 highway budget. If all articles approved, one million six one million six hundred thousand eleven dollars nine 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 hundred eighteen sixty-nine. To be raised by taxes would be one million four hundred and sixty-five thousand four hundred and eighteen dollars and sixty-nine cents. 2022 projected tax rate would be 0 0.2756. The 2021 tax rate is 0 0.2361. The 2022 tax rate increase of 0 0.0395. The 0 library budget, if both articles are approved, would be $247,597. 
to be raised by taxes would be $247,597. A 2022 projected tax rate would be 0 0.0356. The 2021 tax rate was 0 0.0240. The 2022 tax rate increase would be 0 0.0116. 2022 tax projection tax rate. Tax fund general for the town would be 0 0.0941. The village would be 0 0.0941. Highway would be 0.2756. NA for the village. Library would be 0 0.0356 for the town, and the village would be 0 0.0356. The total for the town would be 0 0.4053, and the village would be 0 0.1297. Please note the tax rate is based on the 2021 grand list. The 2022 grand list will not be available till midsummer. 2022 projected projections, estimated municipal tax. Assessed value, uh, $150,000. The town would be $607.95. The village would be $194.55. For a $200,000 house, the town would be $810.60. The village would be $259.40. Uh, the two, assessed value of $250,000, the town would be $1,013.25, the village would be $324.25. Candidates for office, town moderator, vote for no more than one, one year term, Brian Savage, Brian K. Savage. Select board member, vote for no more than one, for a three year term, Edward A. White Sr. Select Select board member vote for more, no more than one for a two-year term, Nicole Draper and David Descavage. Lister vote for no more than one for a three-year term, James Pratt. Candidates for office, Ogder vote for no more than one for a three-year term, Diane LaRock. Trustee of public money vote for no more than one three-year term, Brian K. Savage. And we have trustee of public money, two-year term is, is vacant. And trustee of money for a five-year term, no, excuse me, library trustee for five-year term is vacant. Candidates for office, library trustee, vote no more than one for a one-year item expired term for Sarah Garvey. Uh, cemetery commissioner, vote for no more than one for a five-year term, Nicholas Barroso. Collector of delinquent, de delinquent taxes, vote for no more than one for a one year term, Betty L. Cheney. Vote March 1st, 2022, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Or request an absentee ballot from the town clerk's office. And that is here at the uh, Village Complex voting. Thank you all for attending and your support. Let me make that shorter. <coughs> Questions on that? James, yes. Um, Do the best. All, <laughs> um, all of the um, summaries that you put on the PowerPoint, yep. are they in the book? I didn't see them. No. Well, the, the PowerPoint's not in the book. No, that's right. It's on the website. It's traded after. Yeah. So it's on the website? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, any other questions? Why yes, is the sir. library requesting another 53500 over their initial uh, request? That is for their operation expenses, separate uh, from... Why didn't they budget that right into their initial uh, request? Because we separated the library, but this, that's what we just talked about from last year. The town took over the operations of the building, so the town, town is now paying the employees we're, we took over the payroll part of it, okay. and so they, we took took out our we, the library took out their portion for maintaining the inside maintenance of the building. 
and we took over the actual maintenance of the building and property. That makes sense. Where did the money go? No, no, that doesn't, doesn't make sense at all. No. Um, someone else wants to explain it better than me. I can try. Can yeah. I try? Well, first thing I'll say is uh, I can understand why people are very confused over this issue. And I can't really tell you the, the answer and address this issue because there's, I'm still a little bit confused. Uh, but we're, we're doing it for the right reasons. Uh, and I think this is going to be one of the things that, you know, we're going to have to grow into. Uh, I was made to find out that here in the state of Vermont, there's only two other towns where the librarian is not on the town payroll. Uh, so, it, you know, there is uh, a lot of changes in other towns and that, that took place before what we're doing here, but it's a very important structure, uh, very important to the town. So we're going to basically be responsible for the structure itself. Uh, the day-to-day -day maintenance is still going to be done by the library. Things like insurance, uh, now the employees are going to have uh, health benefits. They're gonna have every the librarian or any other staff that works a minimum of 32 hours a week. It's 20, 24 hours a week for retirement and 30 hours a week for health insurance. So employee fits that criteria, then they're eligible for the retirement and the health insurance. So that's a big, that's where a lot of the increase in the overall budget comes from compared to last year. Uh, but it does make it very confusing to have two articles in the town. And, you know, so we're saying the town is running, but then you have this article for the library. So, uh, you know, it is confusing right now, but I hope people do support it. This is going to be a big benefit to the town for a long time to come. And from what I've seen, my own personal observance has been there's been more use at the library than there has in the past. And if we can get quality and keep quality employees in there, it could be a really big asset. Uh, but it is going to, there is that slight increase well, in cost because of the benefits and that's where the majority is coming from. But we're doing it for the right reasons. Who owns the building? Town owns the building. Now. The town has always owned the building. It has always owned the building. But the, the library has always took care of the maintenance. And the and pink, it, pink daughters have not been funding this anymore. They have in the years. The town didn't always own that building. What's that? I said the town didn't always own that building. No, they didn't always own it. But Well, we own it now. But I couldn't tell you how many years it's been since the town's owned it. No, back in the day, it was, I couldn't tell you the day, but it was King's Daughters on the building. I think it was long before my time. And it, we've been working on this MOU for about two years. It hasn't just popped up. It was quite a long process back and forth. Any other questions? Percentages and stuff, you mean? Yeah, yeah you know, town, yeah. village, mm -hmm. every new apartment, it was, it's always really helpful to see that. And sure. just, just a thought to include those mm -hmm. in the journal. There's a lot of material. We can do that. Here. I mean, you get the information from the report. Yeah, the slides are, the slides are made from the report. What yeah. we could do is print up a supply of mm -hmm. what they are available. Yeah. yeah. We got the year. Yeah, sure. We got something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. <clears throat> it's the whole thing with the print. It hits the, the print, printer at a certain time. Yeah. Oh. yeah. But we can figure the, out something. We usually print in the court before this is made. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we could always make some extra handouts yeah. to people, too, if you want to simple it out. That would be a good idea, just mm -hmm. have them at the office or something. Mm -hmm. But like you said, they want to legislate what it's sometimes that part can be too long. I won't buy it next time. Black and white. Yeah. You can print some off of that. Yeah, for just two. Yeah. Okay. All right. Did anybody in Zoom have a question? Town? Only once. Only twice. So to the lady Now. All I gotta do. So Rebecca Rupp said, if anybody wants to revisit the library budget, which is confusing, Abby and I are uh, both here. So I guess meeting at the library. Okay, I'm going to try this again. I'm going to stop sharing. Minimize this. I don't know why the presentation isn't coming up. See this again, but I apologize for that. Can they hear us? <coughs> no. They said they could if we're near the mics. No, just on so I'll go up to the podium. I'll get it started. And then... <coughs> okay. All right, so I want to welcome everybody tonight to the uh, 2021 annual uh, informational meeting. 2021. 2022 for the 21 start. Okay, but anyway, uh, the, this year's cover was the uh, dedication of uh, the used to be Flatiron Park to the Veterans Memorial Park. We want to thank all the military members and their families, uh, past and present. And we watch now. This is. So for 2021, our actual tax rate for the general fund was 0 0.0927. Our proposed 2022 tax rate is 0 0.0909, which was a slight decrease. For the fire department, uh, the 2021 tax rate was 0 0.0496. And the 2022 proposed tax rate is 0.0511. For the police department, the actual tax rate was 0.4210, with a proposed 22 tax rate of 0.4709. And the highway department's 2021 tax rate was 0.1372, with a proposed 22 tax rate of 0.3466. 
So for our grand total, uh, the 2021 tax rate that we billed was 0 0.8805, and the proposed 2022 tax rate, based on the 2021 grand list, um, it'll be trued up when we get the actual 22 grand list this summer, was 0 0.9595, with a change of 0 0.0790. So for a $150,000 house in the village, uh, their village residents actually paid for 2021 $1,320.75. For the, if everything passes with the 2022 proposed budgets, they would pay $1,439.25 with an increase of $118.50. For a $200,000 valued house, the, they actually paid in 21 $1,761. Uh, for 2022, the proposed tax bill is $1,919 with an increase of $158. For a $250,000 house, uh, the 2021 actual was $2,201.25. The 2022 proposed is $2,398.75 for an annual increase of $197.50. So breaking that down by department, for a $150,000 house in the general fund, you're going to pay $136.35. For fire protection, you're going to pay $76.65. For police coverage, you're going to pay $706.35. And for highway, you're going to spend, you're going to pay $519.90 for the $1,326.45. For a $200,000 house in the general fund, you're going to pay $181.80. For fire protection, you're going to pay $102.20. For police protection, you're going to pay $941.80. And for highway, you're going to pay $693.20 for a total of $1,768.60. For a $250,000 house, the general fund taxes are $227.25. For fire protection, it's $127.75. For police protection, it's $1,177.25. And for highway, it's $866.50 for a total of $2,210.75. So this isn't part of the, this is a narrative more that I've done. Uh, it's not in the slides. Um, the general fund taxes pay for the maintenance of the parks and this complex. The complex costs are mostly defrayed by being paid by other departments and MVR rescue. The fire department costs are the same no matter if you are a town or a village resident. Um, we bill, that is based, the amount that we bill the town for fire protection is based on the grand list. So it's the grand list of the town, the grand list of the village, and we get a split. Right now, it's 76% grand list is the town's grand list, and 24% uh, is the village. The police, bu the police budget is for the village coverage. There is a contract with the town and for MBU uh, for an SRO up at the high school. The town contracts for eight hours of coverage per day, seven days a week, and the village residents receive approximately 20 hours of coverage per day, with the remaining four hours covered by an on-call officer. The highway budgets are for sidewalk and street maintenance, plowing, repairs. If you live in the village, you pay general fire, police, and highway taxes to the village. You pay general taxes to the town, which is land records, zoning, health officer, animal control, rescue, and recreation, and the library taxes to the town. If you live in the village, you are not taxed double on these services. Um, in for the budgets um, for next year, for the budget for the year that we're in, um, the general fire and police departments all have accounts for future equipment purchases and building upgrades. Um, for the year that we just ended, we had an audit back in January. I don't have the audit. I just got the draft today, so I don't have it in final form yet. Um, but we do have our books audited every year. Property tax receivables were $32,029 at the end of 21 versus $53,383 for 2020. 
Um, over the year, we did um, maintenance uh, to this room and to the hallway. Um, we've had we've hired a couple of summer employees to help take care of our parks. Um, in the fire department, we had unexpected truck repairs, um, so we went over budget with the uh, transportation expenses. And we had uh, in the highway department, we had unexpected repairs to one of the plow trucks. Then we have um, two. We had uh, we got a cops grant in the police department this year, and we've got two officers that we are um, have under that contract. So that grant covers approximately 40% of their salaries and their FICA. Um, one of the contract, one of the SROs, one is the SRO of the school. So MDU picks up the portion that the grant doesn't cover, and the other one is an additional patrol officer that we have here in the village. Um, the other grants that the police department gets, um, we get quite a bit of money through Stone Garden, which is working in conjunction with Border Patrol. Um, through that grant in 2020, we got a cruiser and we took possession of Franklin County Sheriff's Stone Garden boat. Any costs associated with that, we are reimbursed through uh, this grant, so it's basically no cost to us. Um, we also have other small, like OPDUI grants that we get. So for 2022, the fire department has increased the amount to be put in the equipment replacement account to 45,000. Um, the money is set aside for future equipment purchases and reduces the amount of money we need to borrow when future trucks are replaced. Um, so approximately, by putting this in, when they go for another truck, we will have approximately 40% of the cost of a new truck in the bank. So it's rather, we're, we aren't accruing a lot of interest because the banks aren't paying a lot, but we're not paying 3% interest to the bank on this loan. Uh, increases in the budgets in the police department resulted from additional officer through the COPS grant and wage adjustments. I'm sure many of you have heard every law enforcement agency in the state is scrambling for help right now. And Matt can probably explain more on that um, but we had to do some wage adjustments to retain officers. Um, we have lost, we lost a couple officers right end of the year, beginning of the year, um, that moved on to other op opportunities. Um, we will be doing some work on the bridge that covers, that goes over the river. We do have a grant that is a 90% grant. Uh, the 10% that comes out of our pocket, which is a match of 17,500, is in the 2022 budget. Um, we also have our enterprise funds, water, sewer, and electric departments. Um, those enterprise funds operate as if it was a business, and those are the costs are paid by user fees. One thing that we had through this pandemic, there have been a couple of programs. Um, the latest ones were the VRAP program and the VCAP 2 program, which were helping people pay their um, utility bills. and um, we received a fair amount of money through those programs. They weren't easy to navigate. They take a lot of time. Um, the, v, the VRAP program is still going, and um, it takes Katie a lot of time over the course of a month um, to upload customer bills. Um, but we've seen our receivables have gone down um, from throughout the year because people are taking advantage of these programs um, to get their bills caught up. Um, we had a drought. Uh, this summer, and because of that, uh, our generation was quite low compared to other years. In 2019, we generated 91% of the power that our electric department needed. In 2020, we generated 74%, and in 2021, due to the drought, we only generated 45% of the electricity that we needed. So because of that, we are, our purchase power did go over budget. Uh, the other thing we're seeing is long lead times on inventory items like wires, transformers, street lights. Um, the water and sewer departments, we also took advantage of those VRAP and VCAP programs with our customers. And that is it. I think the rest of it Reggie will touch on. Do you have any questions for Reggie on those numbers? Yeah.
Can you hear me now? You may have to hit this button for Jason. some reason. It's not. Okay. Okay. All right, I'm going to come over here because. Okay, so 2021 in review, uh, so this year the wastewater plant, we continue to work on the, the treatment of the TMDLs, the phosphorus rules for the state of Vermont. Uh, so uh, we had a, uh, there was four vendors that came in that would filter our effluent coming out of the plant going into the lake or the river. And uh, the Nexium Blue Pro uh, filters were the ones that looked like it was taking all of the uh, the uh, TMDL, the phosphorus out of our, uh, our effluent from the wastewater plant. So if that project goes through, it's about $3 million to upgrade our wastewater plant. And that's a state mandate, correct? That is a state mandate, yes. We have, to, uh, yeah, we have to reduce phosphorus. Uh, we can do it chemically, but it's not advisable because it's really, really expensive to add all of this flock into the wastewater to remove the phosphorus from it. It is really, really expensive to add chemical. And when you're trying to get rid of something to put back in the river and into the lake, why do you want to add chemical, right? So this Blue Pro takes care of the phosphorus. The phosphorus is it's, uh, <clears throat> it's suspended, okay? So it's dissolved in water. So if you put the flock in there, it'll pull it out. The next pro will do the same thing without chemicals. Uh, the water treatment plant is still operating pretty well. After a couple of years ago, we had to do a lot of work on our uh, filters. Uh, but this year, we focused a lot on the exterior of the building. We had, uh, we had some ditches we had to, uh, to line, uh, some stormwater ditches, some overflow ditches for the plant, did some tree trimming. Uh, and then this year, all of our tanks, so our reservoir, our clear wells inside the building. So you got the reservoir up on Donaldson Road. That had to be inspected, uh, and then we have clear wells inside the, the plant that had to be inspected, so a diver went in there and looked at them, same thing up at the reservoir. So everything looked good, and we passed those inspections. So public works, uh, we were able to do some paving. We paid for our street, half of Church Street, uh, along, Furman, uh, along with Furman. Uh, Greenwich on the Canada side of uh, Greenwich, uh, we paved that, and uh, Tebow Street. Uh, a new five-foot sidewalk, we're trying to do that now as we upgrade our, uh, our sidewalks to do five feet. And then uh, we added that on Greenwich Street, uh, the repaving, and then we added some new storm structures there. Uh, also, there's a section of Linda Avenue that's really bad in the wintertime. And you can see there was, why did we do just one small section? Because that section's really bad. Uh, so we dug up the concrete, redid the road base, and then uh, fixed that. And then uh, throughout the village, we did five sewer structures and replaced four uh, water boxes and rods. So it was basically curb stops. Uh, the structures are basically the storm drain. It's concrete around, and the cover sits on it, those structures. So if you see some of them now, they're kind of banging around because of the heavy trucks. So we've we got to go through and fix those. Uh, so also Marble Mill, we go down there and uh, the summer help, like Lynn mentioned, helps out quite a bit with our parks. Then we went down, did a lot of the cutting of the evasives uh, along the bank. Uh, there's a lady that is going to bring sheep and goats down this year uh, and try that to see if they can knock down the evasive species. That's going to be kind of fun to watch. we really want to see goats and sheep come on down to Marble Mill. Are you going to fence it in? Yes. Yeah, you know, they'd be fenced in. Uh, okay. So the electric department, I mean, we continue to keep our system reliable. Uh, our outages are very limited when we do have them. Uh, this last storm, windstorm, we didn't have any outages. So that's kind of good. We spend a lot of money in tree trimming, so that helps in that process. Uh, the AMI, uh, automated metering infrastructure, uh, like Lynn was talking about, the 600 and something thousand dollars that are going to water meters. Uh, there's also a portion going to the electric meters. 
So basically the munis, municipal owned utilities, are one of the few that don't have these automated meters. And now with the onset of electric charger uh, EV cars, charging at home, uh, the state's mandating differential rates structures possibly. Uh, but with AMI too, uh, once we get everything installed, uh, final reads, if somebody sells their house, we can do it remotely. But also, uh, you can also check it every 15 minutes. So if you get a water leak, and all of a sudden, uh, at the end of the month, you get this outrageous bill, well, it'll actually ping. It says, hey, you got a water leak. Or you have excessive use for your electric system. Check it out. That's going to be kind of good. Uh, And our GIS system, basically, it's a, uh, it's our whole uh, grid, our whole infrastructure, and it's on a tablet. And uh, it shows each pole, all the locations, meter locations, uh, poles, wires, transformers, everything. So if there's a car pole accident, the guys can pull into the, into the uh, bay, they can pull it up on their map, they can load stuff up in their truck, off they go. They don't have to go back and forth, back and forth. And it also helps with this automated AMI system as well. Uh, we have the same system, the same ability for our water department, so we can GIS curb stops, uh, hydrants, uh, sewer band holes, all that kind of stuff too. They're all integrated within each other. So one question I heard that, you know, we're going to eliminate the job, no, because the meter reader that's working now, you'll be updating the GIS system along with managing the uh, AMI system. <coughs> Next. Hydro plan. Here's the fun. So right now we're in the next stage of uh, uh, five-year relicensing the hydro plant. We started in 19. Uh, our next, and this should give us a license for another 40 years. The next step right now, uh, the issue that we're having is with the Agency of Natural Resources. Uh, we have to go through our. It's a PME. It's a planning mitigation and. Enhancement, I believe it is. I got it over there. But anyway, they want to see continuous flow going over the bladder and for aesthetics. And that's megawatts of lost generation uh, per day. So, in turn, what that would cause us is that we may have to go out by other means of, like Lynn was saying, you know, when you have a dry summer, we have to go out and buy other generation some other place. Uh, we would probably most likely have to go out and buy even more generation from other uh, avenues. We don't know if they'll be, you know, it could be uh, fuel truck or fuel uh, generators. We don't know. They may not all be 100% renewable. Because right now we are 100% renewable. So, like, if our local businesses are want to tell, you know, when they're selling to their customers, they're receiving electricity from 100% renewable resource that opens up more markets for them, our businesses. So this doesn't only hurt us as customers, it hurt us as a village-owned hydro plant, it also hurts our businesses, it also hurts Highgate. Highgate gets a percentage of our uh, production in tax revenue. So if you look at the northern bordered states, uh, the northern bordered counties of the state of Vermont are considered a depressed area, and this will only impact us even more. Uh, so there's going to be some discussion on this. Uh, we plan on having a public meeting with the agency here as well. So we'll make that public. So the more people that come in and support Hydro uh, would be the best for us. Uh, I mean, I can argue that in since 1894, we've had some form of a dam there. We started generating electricity. Brian, you probably, your brain cells better than mine. When did we start generating electricity there? It was in the 30s, right? Or that, or Earlier than that. Early 20. Yeah, was it? One generator is in 1920. 20, okay. So we have not, so over all of our years of generating electricity, we have not caused extinction uh, or any uh, any harm to the environment or aquatic life in all of this, these uh, years, all of these years. But now during this uh, renewal, we have to go through and argue that we are good stewards of the river, we are good stewards of the lake. But I can honestly tell you, and this is Reg's opinion, that their mission is to get rid of the Lower Swan Dam, and that's their goal. 
So they're trying to have us go outside of our FERC uh, boundaries and go from Lower Swan all the way to Lake Champlain. They want to see how our project is affecting 10 miles plus, maybe 15 miles, because it's seven miles from the dam to the Lower Swan. And so it's quite a ways. And it's ridiculous studies. But that's my opinion. And the trustees' opinion. Uh, plant shutdown. This is so basically we usually do it in August when it's warmer, but because if we do have a if we do on the outside chance have a good rainstorm, uh, if we shut down later in the fall, usually August is one of the hotter months and that could affect our transmission charges. So we try to keep it up during that time period. So if we are generating something anyway, it helps with that. <clears throat> and then replacement of compressor too uh, back in March, and I believe that's for the uh, bladder. Uh, the maintenance department. So the maintenance department has uh, quite a bit of assets that they manage. So the, this complex, they manage the uh, water plant, sewer plant, the pump stations, uh, fire department area. So all of this, uh, all of our assets are on what they call e-maintenance. So the guys will get like daily PMs, quarterly, uh, bi-monthly, uh, like I said, quarterly, annual, whatever. So it just reminds you, you know, that when you have so many assets to go visit them, it's an automatic reminder. I, I get a reminder, get birthday cake each month. Uh, so the front office, uh, Lynn touched on this, but the front office is really busy maneuvering in the COVID relief funding uh, to help customers pay their bills. Uh, they handle a lot of federal state monies also for highway, water, and sewer, and the police department. Uh, our uh, grants are run through there, village grants are run through there. Uh, uh, the independent audit that Lynn talked about, uh, it's from uh, KBS in St. Albans. It's quite an extensive audit. Uh, they go through, I mean, fine tooth comb. They give us a, a myriad of questions that we have to ask. And basically, they're ordering our books to make sure the books are accurate, but they're also checking for uh, embezzlement and that kind of stuff. So, how much did it cost us this year for? It's twenty-six thousand dollars. Twenty-six thousand dollars for our audit. So the books are quite extensive, and they stay here a week. Uh, and the accounting staff uh, in the village, uh, village-wise, about eleven million seven hundred thousand dollars that they, they manage up front. Uh, the village complex. I want to keep this on the radar. We didn't put this on the uh, on the uh, warnings this year, but this building since 1972, I think it was built. Uh, other than 78, thank you. Uh, other than what you can see is paint that we've done in here and in the hallway to spruce it up. When I first got here in 2011, we did the siding outside. It's still it need we need expansion. Uh, we used to have a boardroom. Now all of our meetings are held in here. Uh, we do have uh, we do have plans for an expansion. But we're hoping to try to get some grants first before we go to the voters to help with it. But the police department are working out of a thimble, and with COVID and just cold and flu season in general, we need room for everybody to, uh, to be able to work. So uh, that's in the plan. So I just wanted to keep this on the radar. <clears throat> and emergency services, police departments. It's a pleasure for me to introduce uh, Matthew Sullivan as our uh, new police chief, started uh, January 3rd, I think it was. And uh, uh, after Chief Joey Stell had retired on January 31st, Matt Sullivan started. So welcome, Matt, to uh, Swanton, and looking forward to uh, many years with you. Thank you. Yeah. So if anybody wants to abuse him, now's the time. <laughs> you want to ask him questions. Next. And yeah, so we had the retirement. James Hall retired, uh, Chief Leonard Stell, Kevin Cleary, uh, resource officer, retired, and he hates a camera, so he didn't get a picture. And uh, he's still working part time up at uh, MVU as a resource officer. He's a great guy, does a lot of uh, wonderful stuff for the kids, uh, a great uh, uh, mentor for them. Next. So this year, uh, candidates for village president, one year term, Neil Spear. Village clerk for a one-year term, Diane Day. Uh, village trustee for a three-year term, Eugene Lombard. 
and collector of delinquent taxes, a one-year term, Betty Cheney. So that's all I have for tonight. For tonight, if you have any questions, let me know. Now I don't know, James, if you you have uh, 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 two people, two candidates for one position. I don't know if you folks want to say anything. I'll give you an opportunity yeah, if you want. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. So Nicole and David, if you guys want to say anything, so I'll let I'll turn this over to you guys. So you can Hi everybody, um, I'm Nicole Draper. For those of you that don't know me, I have been sitting here with the select board for the past year and I am very passionate about Swanton and um, really look forward to serving the community of Swanton in any way, um, but I would really enjoy being on the select board. Um, I think it is a great opportunity for anybody and everybody to get involved in local government and this is how I chose to do it. So I really look forward to continue to serving you in the next year. Hello everyone, uh, David Jaskowicz, as was mentioned before, I'm the uh, recently retired uh, town administrator for Swanton. And I love Swanton and I, I want to keep, continue to keep uh, serving it in some way. And that's why I'm running this year. I have uh, uh, nine years and nine months working uh, for Swanton as a town administrator. Uh, prior to that, I worked in uh, a neighboring town, Highgate, for four years as their town administrator. And I have uh, over 30 years of experience working for different municipalities in both Vermont and New Hampshire. So I have a great deal of experience in how uh, municipalities are run and uh, would like to uh, serve on the select board here in future years to uh, help the board uh, uh, continue the, the future growth for Spawn and also the, the planning for the town. One thing I would like to see is uh, uh, an initiative to get a, a town charter uh, started, uh, the initiative to get that process going so the town could actually have a charter of its own. The village has had its own charter since 1888. Uh, the only charter uh, Swanton has had is back, way back to 1763 when Vermont was still part of New Hampshire and Governor Benning Wentworth uh, issued a charter that doled out uh, large parcels of land to his friends. Uh, since then, we haven't had any. So I think uh, given the fact that we're in the 21st century, it's time uh, for the town to take that step and get a charter that would better define how the, uh, uh, the government in the town operates and uh, have some guidance for uh, select boards and other boards, boards to, uh, to follow uh, as they operate. So uh, I hope you will uh, vote for me and I will thoroughly enjoy uh, working for the town uh, even more in the future if you do. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Any of the trustees want to say anything? I guess for coming up for no. Gina. <laughs> everybody on the spot. I'm gonna get in trouble tomorrow. Um, no trouble at all tonight. In fact, the first thing I want to say is I want to thank the village staff. It's been difficult the past couple of years. And we try to keep an eye on everything and try to keep everybody safe and sound. And uh, we have a loss of your own family with COVID. However, uh, a couple of things in the future really demand our attention. And in my mathematical and scientific background, I tend to be technical. However, we've got ARPA funds that we must deal with. They're going to have to be spent in the next few years. Uh, some of the projects that are pet projects to me is the bridge repair, and that's going to be a nuisance to some of us this coming summer. Um, 
we're trying not to do it at the same time that the town replaces a culvert on the BB road. So we're working with that to make it that. Um, another thing that I've been in favor of since well, go back eight, nine years when we had a repair of the water line that crosses the bridge. When I saw the repair of that, I watched it from the other side of the river as they were doing it, and I know there is a certain limit to the life of that line. So we're working with some engineering firm to have a new water line or an additional water line put underneath the river. So that's another project that I'm in very much favor um, And one of the items that I don't think anybody is going to too much here tonight, but our budgets, um, one of the things that you all see out there is the cost of living index and how it's continuing to rise. So we've set up our budgets to provide the services that you all expect. I hope it stays that way. The cost of fuel is an example of it. I can tell you that at all. And we use a lot of fuel. So that's where we are as a group. And I want to again, thank the village for the really, really joined the staff that we have. And of course, we welcome on the police chief and any other new employees that he brings in with him. I think he's going to bring in a couple. I hope. <laughs> At any rate, thank you all for your support. Thank you, Jim. Jim brought up a good point. I forgot the water line was that uh, it was supposed to start this spring, but uh, the engineer had bored and they found more ledge than what they anticipated, so they're gonna to have to try to research another area along the riverbank. So the uh, the Webster Terrace area, the lower area of the Marble Mill Park, uh, so they may have to just relocate the bore so they can go underneath the river. It's gonna come up uh, Boundary Street and connect to the, the 12 inch. So that's has to, that has to be postponed. So we'll have to, you, Gene brought up a good point about the uh, BB Road culvert and our bridge. That'll make a lot of fun downtown if we don't coordinate that. We work together. I'm running for village president. My name is Neil Spear. Just in case you had not known that. And I, I want to I want to bring up what Gene brought up too. I've been around for a few years here, and uh, I want to thank the Swan team, village team, and the town select board. Uh, I think we work great as a community. Uh, we've had some hurdles in the last few years that we've handled pretty well. Uh, it's, a, it's an honor to serve the people of Swan, the Swan community, village and the town, and uh, I hope to continue on. There's a lot of opportunities out there that are coming down the pike uh, that will be good for whole Franklin County and especially the town and the village of Swan. Uh, like me, St. Albans town, uh, there's a lot of opportunities coming. We still need some, some uh, downtown improvements, as you can all tell. Uh, and uh, I, I originally came on this board uh, because I was concerned about our community, the downtown especially, and I live in the village. Uh, the grocery store had been sold and it was empty, and uh, we've come a long way since that day, and I think we can go farther. And with your help, when we vote uh, next week, uh, I'm sure we'll handle it well. So, um, one other thing I'd like to say that nobody mentioned or we didn't come to on our our Zoom, uh, our Article 10, I want to clarify that, it's kind of an unusual item to be put on a, a small town uh, agenda, and that's the, uh, the legalization of the retail sale of cannabis. Uh, in our talks with St. Albans Town and some other smaller communities, uh, they, they were trying to take the initiative uh, to see how the voters felt about the retail sale of cannabis in their communities. So we agreed to put it on our ballot.
up, so it's not going to be legal till uh, legal to sale till October. But uh, this way, we'll be able to tell if the if the opportunity comes up, uh, we'll know whether the Swan community wants to get involved. So, uh, other than that, if, you, if there's no more questions on in the field, or do you have any questions, Suzanne? Yes, you do. You know, I have a question. Um, I guess it's tough because everyone's in the room. Is this an opportunity that someone can bring us up to date on what's happening, having what's going on with the hotel, the roof? The Riviera Hotel. Yeah. The hot spot on South River Street. This is true. This is it. Um, we we haven't a, heard anything for a long time. That's so. a source of frustration for me. And, I'm sure if you were on the SWAT discussion group, they've done a lot of talk about that. But uh, the reality is uh, the village purchased that to get rid of a blighted area in the community, and it was it was it was started with the intention of having funding come through for the cleanup and the removal of the structure. Uh, the uh, the promised assistance that the uh, village has gotten has been slow coming. Uh, we have to address the brownfields issues that are involved in that piece of property before we can tear it down. Uh, we have had a phase one engineering study done, which guessed at what was what had to be. Uh, uh, removed. Uh, we're looking for fund We have funding for phase two, which is going to happen this year, uh, which is the assessment of the property, where they actually go in and test what the materials are that are in question, and do some borings on the lot, uh, see if there's any ground contamination, and uh, <coughs> then we'll be able to go over there and see what we have to clean up before we can tear it down. Uh, so that's that's where the Riviera Hotel project starts or ends up. If there was leaching in, in the ground, does that affect the properties on either side? Do you know? I don't know. That's what that that's what phase two will, will tell us. The, the next engineer gets. And that we've heard that that is that price of that is funded. Uh, and we've got to get a hold of the engineering firm to get a phase one to, to do phase two. And then we can proceed. So hopefully, I'm not going to say any more because I've been, we've been hoping this is going to happen a lot sooner. Of course, COVID complicated everything. Uh, the state staff that we had to, to deal with was out of the office. And uh, so we're hoping we can start to clean up. And we have, we have, as you can see, we have cleaned up the outside that is not going to be in danger of con contamination. We've taken the trees out, trying to straighten it out a little bit. So you can see the beautiful buildings there. <laughs> so, so, sarcasm. So that's the village question I have. And then on the town side, um, the expansion of the airport, that's going to be uh, well, that's, that's well. It's actually uh, more of a high gate. <coughs> but we're involved somehow. Well, the village is going to the water and sewer lines will be extended from roughly NBU to the airport. And I'm not sure where that is right now. That we did hear from Pikeview just last week. Uh, they're moving ahead into the. I think just Reg can fill you in on that, but I think needed a, a lever of support from the village, uh, you know, seeing it as such that we supported the project and it was made for the whole, the whole county. Uh, but uh, so things are things are moving on that. Can you just I can add some color to that? But so basically, uh, we're uh, gonna we have to sign a letter. Of, Memorandum of Understanding. So basically, it says what are we going to offer Highgate. Uh, so 
it's not going to affect the entire rate payers at all within the village uh, for water and sewer. Uh, that uh, all the bonds and uh, grants that they're getting is going to cover all the costs. We have plenty of capacity for water. We have plenty of capacity for sewer. Uh, what we're going to do is do a TMM time and maintenance. So we will build them to go check out their pump stations, winterize their hydrants. And if they have any issues with any infrastructure, we'll go and help them out on the time and materials kind of thing. So we'll build them that way. There will be a charge for water and sewer. Uh, that's what we need to discuss as uh, water commissioners on what that charge should look like to Highgate because obviously they have to recoup whatever they bond for. So we'll sell them the water, but they're going to sell water also to their customers. So we'll have to figure out what that looks like too. Uh, but uh, I mean, one of the trustees basically, that was, uh, that was a, a, a big economic boost for this area. When the study was done, uh, we had them uh, do a study also in the surrounding areas in Swan as well, because it's so close. So whatever growth happens there, it will lead over to the swamp anyway. So this is one of the major, uh, one of the major projects happening in Franklin County. Let's say. That's a once important. in a lifetime opportunity. I understand that. Thanks for updating everyone who looks like Talking about updating. I'm, I'm talking from the town standpoint now, but uh, we did uh, a couple months ago, we meaning the uh, trustees, the village manager, and the town, some representatives from the town select board, met with uh, uh, Brendan Diesel and, and a couple of the, uh, the St. Albans town select board. And they're, they're interested in expanding their area too, infrastructure wise, and so. Uh, there's there's some interest there with St. Albans Town, uh, which we will we'll go far. But the, the the communities in Franklin County have got to start working together if they're going to want it. If they're going to make the development work for all of us, development needs more of a tax base, so, and we need some commercial uh, industrial development. Uh, Help the rest of us uh, over the time. So that that that's both the town and the village interest. So I got a crank. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Neil. Any more questions from the audience or on Zoom? I I see no questions on Zoom from anybody. Okay, well, thank you all for coming. Don't forget to vote next Tuesday. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So I, in my capacity as village president, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn this informational meeting of the Swamp Village Board of Trustees. So I have a motion and a second to adjourn this meeting. Uh, all those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Thank you again. Turn it over to Brian and uh, James. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn our portion of the informational meeting. I move. Second. Second. All, right. all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Yeah,